All right, Mexican Joe here with Northeast Texas Preppers. Uh, we're here today with Bob Wells um, down here in Lindale. Uh, Bob, you, you, you got awesome nursery down here. Um, I was going through your pamphlet here, and please come out and check out Bob. But you get one of his pamphlets with everything he's got a full inventory. Have him mail you one. The website. Yeah, and the, plus the website. Now you're you're a fifth generation uh, gardener. Right. That's, that's, that's a lot of family. <laughs> yeah, it is. And before, uh, my great grandfather's grandfather died in the Alamo fighting for Texas independence. So there's a lot of history with our family too. But they were all farmers. Uh, you know, fruit farmers mostly with stone fruits, but uh, did a lot of vegetable gardening too. So. Yeah, and this is really cool. I mean, I've come, we've come out here, and we've been, I've brought out a bunch of people, you know, from the prepper community, uh, and just you've got everything. I mean, I think that one of the big things that that I found is that you know you, we go to the Home Depots and the Lowe's and the and the WalMarts, and all we have to do, all we can get is what they've got, right. and whether that's an Anna apple or a El golden Marta, something or yeah, whatever, El that's Peach, yeah. right. That's it. But yeah. yet, if I want an apple, I can come here and I can tell you what apple tree I want. Right. One, you have it. Right. Two, you can tell me if it's going to grow for me. Right. It'll because, steer you right on the varieties, yeah. Right, because yeah. some of the stuff you've got here won't fruit here. Right. Because it's for export. But, yeah, it's for Houston. And we have customers from Houston or Corpus, as well as this area, northeast Texas area. And wherever you're from, that will steer you the, for the varieties that will do right in your area uh, for chill time and so forth. Right. Now, and, and we were talking with Rob. Uh, Rob, I've talked to you a couple times, but you're a busy guy if you're trying to run everybody around. Uh, Rob's over here, and Rob's great, and I like talking to Rob and getting some of the stuff off Rob. Yeah, he can help. Yeah, he yeah. can help you, but the problem with Rob is Rob's camera shy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, we're gonna hang Thank you, guys. Sure we'll appreciate come back and see you. All right. Sure. Appreciate <laughs> that long trip down. Yeah. <laughs> We'll need some more stuff. All right, thanks. Then everybody got to come see Bob. <laughs> yeah, customers market. Too. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, um, something you mentioned here a minute ago. Uh, th we've, I've got a, a list of questions here, and we're in private. I'm going to be all over the place. Um, first off, uh, let's get where you're at. Okay, we're in Lindale, Texas. Uh, that's just north of Tyler, off of I-20. Um, he's 90 miles east of Dallas, 100 miles west of Shreveport, just off I-20. Uh, when you get off Highway 69, just come north of 69. Uh, and you're right off Highway 16. Yeah, you have to get off of 69 and go 1.8 miles east on FM 16. And uh, you can call us. Or, or north as the, high, as the yeah. sign says it. Yeah, well, north north of 20 and then the east of town on right. 16. Yeah. Right. Um, and this area, you know, other than, you know, coming out to see Bob's got a bunch of other things. Um, the Miranda Lambert store is here in town. Uh, Miranda Lambert's here from Lindale. Casey Musgraves is from, uh, from Mineola. And we got Neil McCoy at a long view. So this whole Northeast Texas is pretty rich in, in people who've been are from here. Yeah. Um, Bob had mentioned earlier uh, the website BobWellsNursery.com. Uh, you can also go to his Facebook page and look at Bob Wells Nursery. Just search that and you'll find that. Um, some of the questions that I had, as you had mentioned earlier, that you would steer us into the proper trees and fruits for chill time right. or chill hours. Okay. When I was looking through your book, I was confused. I'd never heard that term. Right. Fruit tree gardening to me is new. Right. Can you explain what chill hours are? Chill, chill hours in the winter are is uh, uh, for every hour you get, it's under 45 degrees. Some people think it's under 32, but it's uh, 45 degrees and, up and below. And a lot of varieties right here in this area, they need uh, seven mm. to 900 hours of uh, chill time in order to produce. Now, Nacogdoches or Houston, they all need anywhere from three to 600, which they get every year, but they normally won't get what we get here. North of here, they'll get 1,000 or 1,300 hours, but an 800 hour uh, peach tree, for instance, will do well in a 1,000 uh, hour uh, climate, or if we have a cold winter here. What's hurt us lately is we've had so many mild winters that we're starting to recommend to people to plant some of the 800 hours and some of the 650 hours here. In that way, varieties where it's at anyway, whether you plant 10 trees or 1,000 trees, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You yeah. know, do a variance of peaches or plums or whatever. And uh, you'll have some crop, some years you'll have a 100% crop, some years you'll have just some trees uh, that uh, produce. But see, that, that, that's something, that goes into the confusion of, of a lot of the stuff that you know but you're here to answer those questions because 
I'd never seen that until I looked at your, until I looked at your pamphlet. Right. And then I had to research it, and I think Jack ended up mentioning it on uh, the Jack Spirico show. Uh, so that was one. Um, you've got some crazy varieties. You've got avocado, tangelo, olives, not to mention all the peaches, persimmons. I've been looking for, for persimmon trees, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we've got fruit cocktail trees, three-in-one pear trees, three-in-one apples. Grab that camera. Getting us. Uh, we've got fruit cocktail trees that have four or five varieties to a, tr uh, to a tree. We sell them as a four in one. Sometimes they'll end up with five in one. Oh, that's so. these here, right? Yeah, somewhere back here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, over here. There they are. Here we are. Okay, let's, let me spin over here. Let's look at these and let's kind of go into that. Yeah. And we've got a cherry, Lapin's cherry, that does good here. Here's the fruit cocktail trees right here. Four in one fruit salad trees. Okay, and explain that. Now that's that's that's. I've got different fruits budded on the same tree right here. Peach, apricot, nectarine, and I got a harken peach. And another all, peach. Yeah, all of this is on one tree. Right. Okay, so basically each one of these limbs has been grafted onto this tree. Right. Been grafted onto a peach tree. Grafted on a peach tree. Okay, and what, what is this? Is this a five gallon bucket? That's a seven. That's a seven gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what does one, a tree like this go for? Uh, 59.50. And for our standard five gallon fruit trees, go for about 24.50. And it depends on the volume. We give volume discounts, you know. Uh, yeah, but what's really awesome about this, the, the being a grafted tree, is, is that one, I can have fewer trees in, in, in a smaller area yeah. and end up with a lot of different variety of fruit. So that's really kind of cool. Yep. Now, um, I was talking to Rob, and he had mentioned that you guys do some of your own grafting, but you don't do a lot of these fruit. Some of these fruit. Right. Trees. They're a lot of these are patented, and they're in the propagation. We have to uh, purchase them from Dave Wilson Nursery in California, which they have a website too. They sell wholesale only, but you can get a lot of information on their website. Uh, and we have a lot of their uh, information on our website now. But you're, but you are their, their guy in Northeast Texas. Right, right, yeah. So if you're in the long, if you're in the Longview, Nacogdoches area, Tyler, this is where you want to come. Um, you can get with them. Now, uh, Rob had mentioned that there's also some hybrid fruits that y'all have got. Uh, yeah, like plumcots. Yeah, well, yeah. Explain it. Yeah, let's go look at those and let's see. Let's see what that is. Yeah, they've just crossed. Uh, they have. They've got a guy in California crossed a lot of these up. Like the dapple dandy pluot and flavor so, supreme. So a pluot is a plum and an apricot. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other ones you've got? Oh uh, well, there's apriums, co cotton candy aprium. Yeah, an aprium, which is an apricot and and plum. And plum. Mix. And, uh, we've got a lot of varieties of the aprium and the pluots in here. And then we have a bl uh, spring set plum cot. So look, let's say an aprium or a pluot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess these are in a five or seven gallon five bucket. Five gallon. Okay. Now, what do these go for? Uh, they are around thirty. Let's see, thirty-four fifty. Okay. So. And like so, I said, if people come out, we'll we'll work with them on pricing. But the thing is, is these are this is a very unusual yeah. tree. Yeah. And a very tasty, very tasty fruit. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you can get you can get a bunch of different things going there. Well, that's really cool. Um, and we've got the cold hardy avocados and cold hardy olive, called Ar Arbequina olive. And then we've got three or four varieties of uh, avocados like Pancho and Fantastic in Mexicola and Mexicola Grande on the avocado varieties. Yeah, so. and see, well, that in, in one of my other lists here, um, this is just what I pulled out of, out of the brochure here. And it's not complete. And it's not complete, okay. <laughs> He's got 19 black different varieties. This is all different varieties up per plant. 19 different blackberries, five different blueberries, three raspberries, 12 strawberries, 32 different peaches, six different apricots, 18 apples, 10 pears, nine different types of plum, five different types of cherries, six different types of figs, 25 different types of nut trees and pecan trees, six walnut trees, three almond trees, and five varieties of persimmon, and that's incomplete. Okay, so. If I want a certain something, I, I can call you and go, what do you have for you my get, region? Right, and if, and if you know what you want uh, variety-wise, uh, if we don't have it, we'll try to uh, uh, tell you where you 
you can get it or we'll try to get it for you. And that goes for shade trees, ornamental trees, fruit trees, berries, or whatever. We'll try to help you out with uh, whatever we might not have in stock. I just saw a new one I had not seen before, and I'm more of a, if I can't eat it, I'm not going to grow a thing. But I've got a friend up in Oregon. I just noticed that you've got a red dogwood. Yeah, red and pink and white. Yeah, yeah. because I mean, I've just, you know, I've, I've been running around my property and I'm tagging dogwood trees. I don't cut them down not yes. knowing what they are because that's your early bring it, your early haul for your, for your bees. Yeah. That's going to bring them in early. Right, and most of the native dogwoods in the woods are white. You know? Right, that's what mine are. These are budded, you know, so the budded ones uh, onto a white rootstock will give you the red or pink color. Okay, and then I also noticed you also have another friend of mine told me to try to get a red bud, yes. which is another beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. Those are right here. We're gonna swing over here real quick and take a peek at those. Yeah, we got some hybrid varieties that are a little darker red than the regular red bud, uh, like Appalachian and Forest Pansy, Oklahoma. They, yeah. They're so a little more just, dynamic. Yeah, but these are just really nice. Show. And uh, we have uh, flowering and fruiting crab apples and pears, which uh, attract deer or hogs or whatever you're trying to hunt, you know. Now, so, now the crab apple, will the crab apple, uh, uh, will it fruit here? Oh yeah, it's just as native as uh, the apples. Okay. Yeah. But uh, but not all of the apples will fruit here. No. Uh, okay. But, but the crab apple, there's a flowering variety that the birds like because it only gets to be like a marble. And then there's a uh, variety that gets to be like a silver dollar. Right. And that's what you can make good jelly out of or have them for your wildlife. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff there. Let's see Let's see what else we've got in my little list. Um, I don't know, let's, take, let's uh, pause this real quick. We'll take a walk around and see what else we can come up with just to show everybody what you got going on here. Yeah, okay. All right, now we're back. Now we're back in the citrus barn in the greenhouse here, and we were just laughing and saying about how there's no bees in here. Last couple times I've been in here, it's been covered with bees, which is a good thing. Fruit. Okay, see so now we got fruit farm. growing here. Yep. 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 And these are limes. Yep. Persian and, limes. And navel oranges. Navel oranges. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you've a lot got. Of flowers. Which one's that? A lot of flowers there. On right the, now, here's the one I like. Was the tangelos? Yeah, tangelos. Yep. Now. Just point point them out as we go through them. I mean, I see grapefruit, all kinds of stuff. But we were just talking on the walk over here. Orange. Yeah, we were talking on the walk over here, and you had mentioned that uh, it's, with a lot of these, initially they they put them out put them out after Easter. Right. Let them sit out there. Let them grow. Let them do their thing. And then in the winter time, bring them in. Cut them out, through cut a them window, back. or yeah, and uh, grow them grow them as a patio plant. And a lot of it's in location too. If you have a location that's protected from the north wind, and you're close to a body of water or lake or a you know private or public lake. Uh, a lot of times on the south slope of something facing south, uh, you can actually grow them outside year round in the ground, especially after you get them older and about two inches and up. But the best way to do it is just get a decorative pot and put them in it and grow them as a patio plant. And move them in for about three or four months out of the year to a window. And uh, now, they smell good and they fruit good. Yeah, these. I mean, if this was smell of vision this would be great. Um, now, do you think that putting them close to the water, that's because the water stabilizes the temperature? Yeah, water's warm and then uh, protection from the north, if you're on a north slope facing south, it protects them from the wind. From the and north wind. From the north wind and kind of keeps it warmer. So that goes into kind of planting if you're on Location. a property, yeah. putting trees up, up in that northern area mm -hmm. to kind of block, protect your, your plants coming yep. down. Yep. All right, well, let's keep moving through here and let's see what else we got in here because you got a little bit of everything. Oh, several varieties of limes. And, uh, see, yeah, and I think I lost a couple of lime trees this year. There's a question for you. Looking at this lime right here, let me get this dropped down here. I've got some limes and they're 
probably a little taller than this. Yeah. But they 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 got hit pretty hard by this by this freeze we had right. this year. They'll come back if they have been protected and from well, no, and I cut, still green. I cut some of the some of the some of the ones that looked like they were bleached white from mm -hmm. the ice, and I cut them. I snipped them the other day, but when I snipped them, they still felt green on the inside. Yeah. So More than likely, if they're still green, they'll come back with foliage. Uh, we had some 12 and 15 degree weather this year, and you know, several 19s and 21. Yeah, yeah, so. it was pretty. It was, it was a pretty extreme winter for us. Yeah, everybody thinks, you know, yeah. Texas. They think tumbleweeds, and yeah. you have to get to northeast Texas, and we're woods. Right, and we're going back into that colder winters. I think uh, we've had so many decades of mild ones, but what, the Myers lemon is one of the most popular uh, sellers. People can do so many different things with that lemon. It makes a big yellowish orange colored. Fruit. Now, what would you do with that one? Like, oh, you can use it for a lot of recipes, you know, from pies to uh, just using in your drinks, you know. Lemonade and stuff like that? Yeah, tea. And then we've got... That smaller one down here. Morrow Blood Orange. Yeah. A lot of different things. It just depends on what you want. Yep, and this is, this is just the citrus barn, and there's more outside. There's carts of it outside but this is just what's in here yeah. we'll move over to the next one and we'll see what we got over in the next one All right, well now we're back in here now. We just had to, we had to take a little pause here. You had a customer came in here. Now, she was interested in these in these banana trees. Yep. Okay. Now, these don't put off bananas, right? No, not unless you bring them in and grow them in a big pot because they've got to have a good winter inside to make their bananas the next year. So most people plant them here just for ornamental reasons. Okay. And uh, you know, to, around a swimming pool or you know, yeah. show place or something. But we, this greenhouse is full of green leaf and red leaf bananas, and it's got pomegranates uh, with the wonderful variety which grows good here. Now, pomegranates, are they like some of the peaches where you have to have, or cherries where you have to have two of them? You gotta have two plants. Not different varieties, but just two plants to make better crops. They'll make a few with one, but it's better to have two plants. Okay, and then over here, it looks like we've, we've got olives. We've got the olive trees. Yeah, the arbacina, the cold hardy one. We've got cold hardy kiwis. Got so, to have two varieties on them. So now on the olives, on these olive trees here, you're saying they're cold hardy. Yeah. So we can just plant them outside, no bringing them in and out. No, yeah, you, they're right. You can plant them outside. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that's just awesome. I mean, it's just it's a matter of all of this stuff that we can grow here that we didn't know we could grow. Right. These but, kiwi plants are growing in Michigan. These varieties, most of a lot of kiwis are tropical. These happen to be, uh, and you have to have two varieties here. We've got the Metter and the Isai varieties. See, and that was what I really liked about walking around with Rob here a couple weeks ago was he was explaining, well, you're going to need two of these, and you need two of the same ones for these. You need two different ones for these. Right. And so some folks come in want Carolina jasmine or red honeysuckle, you know, for their... Yeah, and I've always planted the, the jasmine just to bring the bees in. Right. Or, and I put it on a fence as a barrier to, for privacy. Right, and these are fruiting loquats. Like the loquat fruit. Okay. See, I've never, I've never had that. What's that like? It's kind of a golden colored fruit, about like a, a small pear in shape. Okay. Yeah, that's about it in this house. Yeah, more we pomegranates. More pomegranates. And the dwarf ones, they're starting to bloom. They make a smaller fruit. See, the pomegranates are real good for you. And then, of course, my birds love them. And then we've got a couple of little sections left here of the jujubes and the lee and the lang and sugar cane. Uh, that's been a salt, highly sought after fruit for the last few years. It's growing jujubes in Texas. Yeah. And then uh, what was the other one? You had a, what was it? It was a cotton candy peach you had over there. That was cotton candy uh, aprium. A aprium, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yep, more, more of the plum cots and the spring sack variety. And then you got all your ornamentals now over here we were just talking about something uh one of your sprinklers over here kicked on over there across the road now we had talked and, and rob had talked to me about it 
Um, right now is kind of your peak business time and you're putting, selling trees and selling plants and all this stuff. But Rob was saying you guys also sell produce. Right. In the summer we have a produce stand here and sell all of our homegrown items from all kinds of peppers and tomatoes, squash. And we have peaches and blackberries. And, you know, during the season, June is the big month. We have a lot of peas and the cream peas, purple whole peas. Potatoes, onions, sweet onions. You guys do any garlic? Uh, no, we don't do any garlic. That's something I've been playing with. Uh -huh. Now, um, one of the things I was I was talking to Rob about uh, was you were telling me here last time I was here that you got peak times and slow times. Right. Um, have you guys thought about doing clinics or workshops during the slow times? You know, bringing people in and say, okay, here's how you do this, and here's how you prune, and here's how you care for something. Yeah. And then you bring people in, and then, of course... I do a lot of that individually anyway with customers that come in or by phone, but uh, when they've got a lot of, you know, questions or a few questions or by email. My problem is I'm almost 60 years old and I'm running out of energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that is an option. Yeah, but I mean, have, having having somebody come in, they all sit down and shop with some chairs, yeah, and yeah. just sit down and do it once, mm -hmm. and you get to talk to everybody could, at one time. I can see that happening in July, August, September. Yeah, yeah, those three months. Yeah, and then you know, even having Rob do it. I mean, Rob's, yeah. Rob's camera shy, but he don't mind talking to people. Right. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> you bet. So anyway, this is this is really great. Uh, everybody, come on out and check yeah. out check out Bob Wells. Um, check out the place. Um, you see Rob pick on it. Yeah. Because he, he won't get on camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, we. I, I brought people out here. Uh, Jack Spearco's got the uh, uh, Walking to Freedom campaign, bringing in people from other states that are oppressive. I met some people, brought them down here. They moved out here to Paris, Texas, up a little north of me, and I brought them down here last weekend, and they picked up three hundred and fifty dollars worth of trees yeah. and plants. And yeah, we appreciate that. Too. Yeah, and that was that was great. Um, yeah. A bunch of a uh, bunch of the preppers in, in our networking group have already been here and not told me. Well, I'm not going to do everybody the disservice. I'm actually getting out there and telling everybody about it. Yeah, and I tell everybody, a green th just a good green thumb is just hard work and a little bit of knowledge, but mainly keeping those trees watered and taken care of during that hot time of the year. But if we can ever be of any help to anybody that's bought trees here and they've had a problem with, say, one out of 12 or something, not leafing, we'll give you another tree. So we're here to uh, please people and to stay in business because that's our uh, we're not in a big metropolis, so we have to depend on happy customers telling other folks about us. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Again, family business, come on out and check out Bob Wells Nursery. Uh, ask him questions. They're here for you. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. You bet.